Welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA 4th Grade Edition. Today we are working on the following standard. Everybody say, hey standard. This is maths.4.mbt.2.5, which in other fancy non-educational lingo is lesson 11 today. It's going to be multi-digit multiplication. Let's get to the math. Okay. What is the product of 3,875 and 4? Okay, a lot of kids know how to solve multiplication problems, but they get so tripped up on this word. They don't know how to solve it. They start to add these things because they don't even know what the word product mean. Product means. The word product means that you're finding the answer. The product is the answer to your multiplication that you're doing. So, a factor times factor equals the product. So you're just finding the answer when you multiply these two numbers. So parents, I'm gonna do this the regular old-fashioned way. This is for you. 3,875 times four, okay? Five times four is 20. Woo, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. 2 times 4 is 28, plus 2 is, wow, 30. Woo, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. Now notice that I'm circling the numbers I put up here. That way I remember I need to do something different with those. I know that I multiply these numbers, but I, when I get up here to the clouds, I need to include those. I need to add them. 8 times 4 is 32. Plus three is 35. Woo, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. Three times four is 12. 12 plus, actually go like this, four times three is 12. Plus three is 15. So my product, my answer to my multiplication statement is 15,500 only, wow. Only that number goes into the box. Okay, example two. Select all the expressions that have a product of 540. Let's talk about this word, expressions. Expressions, um, it's work that you're doing, but it does not have an equal sign. There's not an equal sign, okay? So you're just doing this work, but there's no equal sign. That's the difference between an expression and an equation. An equation has an equal sign. So select all of these expressions that have a product, we just learned about that word, that's our answer to a multiplication problem of 540. So here we go, parents, teachers, students, I'm gonna do this one as an area model, and I'm gonna do this one. So I'm gonna put a little star -y poo over here, that way you can see how to solve this with an area model. It's also called partial products. All right, so let's, for this, to see if it has a product, an answer of 540. I'm gonna to have to solve every single one of these to make sure. <clears throat> so 45 times 12. This is how you solve it, the area model, model or the partial products way. Okay, I'm just gonna make a rectangle. Okay, I'm gonna write 40 and five, because 40 and five makes 45 on top. For this one, I'm going to plug it in right here. 12 is 10, 10 plus 2. Okay? Now I just separate these, separate the numbers with lines. So now it's actually pretty easy. I'll do this in a different color. 10 times 40 is 1 times 4 is 4, and we have two zeros, so 400. In this box, I'm doing 10 times five, because that's where they meet. That would be 50. Two times 40 is 80, and two times five is 10. I'm not done yet, now I have to add up these numbers. I found part of the products, now I need to add them together to include the full product to see if I get 540. 400 plus 50 plus 80 plus 10, all right. Does that look lined up? It's a little slanty. It'll work though. Zero, 
5 plus 8 is 13, plus 1 is 14. 1 plus 5, 540. So this one is an answer. It does have a product of that. Okay, I'm going to go to B now. See, it wasn't that bad. I'm going to go to B. 40 times 5 plus 10 times 2. Well, 40 plus 5 equals 200 plus 10 plus 2 is 20. So that would give us 220. That's not an answer that we need. Now let's try this one. 40 plus 5, you solve what's in parentheses first, just like I did up here with B, times 10 plus 2 is 12. Well, hey, that looks a lot like this. It looks exactly like this. We just took it and we expanded it out for C. So we know that if we were to solve this out, we would get 540. So C is an answer. 54 times 10 would be 54 with a 0. That's what we need. So D is an answer. Now I promised that I would do 180 times 3 using the partial products method. So let's do that partial products area model. Okay, so we take 100. Oh, first make your rectangle. Getting ahead of myself. Getting ahead of myself. 100. We take 80. We're just expanding this out. And then we take 0. Okay, some people don't even need to put the 0 there, but I'm just showing you. Okay, and now we just separate them. 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 80 is 3 times 8, which is 24 with a 0. And 3 times 0 is 0, so when we add these babies up, we get 540. So that is an answer. And then finally, F, 4 times, four, 5 times 40 would be 20 with a 0. That's not what we want. So A, C, D, and E are the correct answers. For multi-select problems like this, you have to pick all of the correct answers in order to get that point, okay? If you pick only some of them, you're not gonna get it correct. If you pick some wrong ones in there, then you're not gonna get it correct. You gotta pick all the correct to get the points. It's a lot of work, but you guys are here to pass the math FSA, so. Okay, example three. Complete the area model below to find the product of 43 and 37. So, we've got 40 plus three is 43. I've got 30 plus seven is 37. I just have to solve it out and I even have my partial products over here. I just have to know where I gotta plug them in, okay? So 30 times 40 would be three times four, which is 12. We've got one, two, zero, so we're gonna plug in those zeros. That's 1,200. 30 times 3 goes in this box. That would be 3 times 3, which is 9. And then add my 0 onto the end. That's 90. 7 times 40 would be 7 times 4, which is 28. Add my 0. 7 plus 3 is 21. Now I add them all up. So as you can see, this went here. 280 went there. So if this were on the computer, you might have to drag them. like that, okay? And now my answer, which it's gonna make sense that it's 1,591, goes right there, but I'm gonna add them all up over here just so I can show you, just so I can prove it to you. Okay, zero plus zero plus one, eight plus two, that's an easy 10, that would be 10, plus nine is 19, woo, it's high up here, nice landing, dude. One plus two plus two is five, Bring down my one, that's my answer, 1,591, you, bloop. All right, example four, last one today. Examine the standard algorithm for multi-digit multiplication used in this problem. Describe the error that was made. Part B. What is the correct product of 1,893 and seven? So we've got an open response item here where we have to explain in words and sentences. And we have an equation editor here where I'm just placing my answer, my number in there. All right, so let's see what's going on. 
So I'm going to write this up just a little bit bigger so you guys can see. I'm going to imagine that this was a student. This is a typical error that I've seen students make. Okay. <clears throat> so here's what I think happened. Let's see if we're right. So 3 times 7, this student put 21 down there. They forgot to regroup the two up here. 9 times 3, they put 63, but my 6 should have gone on top of the 8 to add it. 8 times 7 is 56, but my 5 should have gone on top of the 1 to add it. And 1 times 7 is 7. So this student does not understand how to regroup. Then that's the importance of regrouping. Um, so let me show you here what it should be, which will help us answer part B, and then we'll jump back up to part A. So 3 times 7 is 21. Ooh, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. 9 times 7 is 63 plus 5 is 65 in the clouds. Yes, 7 times 8 is 56, plus 6 would be 62. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6 would be 13. So my answer should, my product should be 13,251, okay? Now let's describe the error. The error is that the student did not regroup when multiplying. Instead, the student brought both digits down to the product line. I've got to leave you with a motivational message. So here it is today. Look in the mirror. I know it's not really a mirror, but use your imagination. Look in the mirror. You see that? See that person staring at you? That is your competition. Simple as that, okay? You often hold yourself back. You are your biggest competition. You might have yourself telling you, no, you can't do it. You can't get that A. You can't pass the math FSA. Okay, well maybe you'll pass, but you'll only get like a level three. You, There's no way you can get a level four or five on this math FSA. No, you can. You need to tell yourself, look at your mirror and say, you can do this. Say it over and over again until you believe it. And then once you believe it, you start taking the steps necessary to make that happen. You are your biggest competition. So stop comparing yourself to everybody else in the world. Focus on you. Work on you, because you matter. You are your biggest competition. I'm out. Bye, guys.